guys, JTX here, bringing the much anticipated Cyclone Raider build guide. Uh, this is going to be a disclaimer at the very start of this video. Uh, this build is not complete yet, at least not for what I wanted to do. There will probably be a two parts to this uh, video, where the first one describes the low tier speed mapper, while the second part describes the end game uh, tier 16 delirium all content farmer. The reason why I decided to split these into two videos is the very first build, which I'm showing you now, is a hell of a lot faster than the build will be when it gets to tier 16s. If you do want to start doing end game content, um, you're going to have to drop a lot of the AOE, the speed, everything that makes this build the speed demon that it is. So that's why I decided it'd be more appropriate to do one video first, just talking about the very speed aspect of this build. And then I'll make another video later documenting at the end game version. This whole build concept came around um, from actually a video I saw by Polsteron that talked about how the Ubers and getting your characters ready to do Ubers is almost like a bait for most people. His main point was that your build will do nothing well. You can do everything okay, but you can't do anything well, like any, any one specific thing well. So with that in mind, this build is meant to be a ultra fast map farmer. It's meant to be ultra fast for lower tiers. It's meant to do the, I guess, the boss rush strategy or the currency, um, the, the beast rush strategy, any low tier strategy that doesn't require a huge amount of investment. Um, you can get this character off the ground and start it for probably less than one or two divs. Um, and yeah, you can scale it up from there. But just noting that if you want to scale it to the end game, like T16, like ultra farming, fully juiced farming, characters going to look a hell of a lot different than what I'm going to show you today. So that's just a disclaimer out of the way, and I'll get into the character. So the character itself is a raider. Uh, my character is called Spicy Meatball Express. You'll understand why in a second when you see my items. Um, I've hit level 96. A lot of this is from, I got to level 90 almost exclusively from doing low tier Belfry. And then after that, I needed more levels and I didn't really want to run like a million maps. So I got some Legion carries to get a couple more levels. I think if you guys can afford it, definitely get the Legion five ways because those levels mean a hell of a lot for character, especially if your character's struggling to get to 91, 92. Just having those extra levels will give you a lot more flexibility in how you plan your character's tree and also how you plan your character's gear. The core build concept for here came from um, using a Namaku's Flame. So this is one of the one of the oldest axes in the game, I think. I used this all the way back in Breach League. One of my first characters I ever played in PoE was a Cyclone Raider using Namaku's. And I thought, uh, let me try to throw it back uh, because we got a couple new texts this league to, to make it a lot better than before. So we got the Crucible Tree and we got the Venue Cascade tech. So I gave this a, a build a try with Namaku's. Uh, I'll show you the Crucible Tree real quick because it is pretty unique. Um, so you can understand some of the choices I made. I would say it's almost a gimmick for this build. It's not back, not back directions reversed for Cyclone and Sweep. This just means when you're hitting um, enemies with Cyclone, instead of knocking them away, it will suck enemies in. Um, this won't really matter if your damage is high enough because you'll just kill stuff straight away on hit. But it kind of is uh, nice to group monsters up if they're a bit tankier because you'll suck them in towards your Molten Burst uh, balls. So I think that's probably the only... Um, real use for this node otherwise i think it's not that useful it's i i, I wouldn't bother going for this uh, if you were trying to replicate this axe or build the other kind of gimmick gimmick node here is 32 percent increased aoe if intelligence is below 100. Um, this is great for picking up some aoe um, cheaply on your tree but it kind of gimps the rest of your build because you my intelligence is at 99 so a lot of my in gems are stuck at level 13 17 and you don't really get the full potential of like using blue gems. So I, I don't think that's really worth it on the axe itself. So if you were to go um, something else, I wouldn't go for these nodes. I'd probably grab like increased fizz modifiers here, or there's a generic node here, like increased AOE if you've killed at least five enemies recently. So this is like a non-conditional. You don't have to have like int requirement or anything. And the other nodes are, so this doesn't help. This crit modifier doesn't really help, uh, help on the axe because there's no crit rolls on it. Uh, I'd probably go for, yeah, like I said, maybe elemental, uh, elemental explicit modifiers. And this knows attack speed here. I think this is pretty decent. Or you can go for crit. I, I think I probably would go for the flat crit from Crucible. So it's like a 1.5% critical strike chance, minus 500 accuracy. I'd go for this node if I were to switch the build to T16, because I'd want to make a crit version. And then this would probably be flat fizz. So the tree would look very drastically different in the final version. My version is just more of a test. Uh, to kind of see what you can do with the axe and what you can do with the uh, crucible tree. So the build's core concept is just um, going lightning fast with the cyclone and scaling like the AOE. So you can see like um, even in the hideout here, it's pretty pretty damn fast. Um, and like we got like a movement speed 
Normally it sits around 200 and when you pop like Berserk and you have Rage stacks up, you get to like 300, maybe 400 if you have all the buffs up at the same time. Um, this lets you clear maps at a shockingly fast rate because you're also attacking with Cyclone while you're uh, moving around the map. Um, I think it's a really, really fun playstyle. The reason why I made this as like my map farmer over like let's say Tornado Shot or Lightning Arrow is because I played a lot of bow builds. I played Omni t Tornado Shot last league. I played um, Lightning Arrow the league before that. So I really wanted to try something different in terms of just the bow archetype. So this is kind of where the idea of like making a melee, quote unquote, melee uh, character has been born. I'll go over the gear quickly. So there's a couple of choices um, that you go. Uh, I think the gear choices that I've done have optimized it for speed. Obviously, you have your Namahus as your weapon slot. I've enchanted my Namahus with plus one weapon range but 10% quality, so you get even more range on your Cyclone. Uh, you don't really have to do this. I think just having the base um, quality is good because it gives you a lot more damage because you're converting all your physical to fire. Um, but I think this is just more like a gimmick. You get a lot more weapon range. You don't have to do this. Up to you if you do. Really depends what type of uh, tier of maps you're going to be doing. And then you have a Devoter's Devotion with a Cyclone attack speed. Nothing really much to say here. It just gives raw movement speed, attack speed, um, even some little bit of Chaos Res. I think it's uh, great for like, fast builds like this. Onto the chest. So I'm using a Duressa's Defiance. Uh, the reason why I'm using Duressa's Defiance is because this build has permanent Onslaught. And Onslaught is really, really fantastic for this build because it has two factors. It gives movement speed and attack speed. And if you're scaling both those factors with Onslaught Effect, you're getting a really, really good uh, value out of your Cyclone because you're not only making your Cyclone hit faster and you're also making your character move faster. The reason why we want to hit really fast is because for our axe there's only a 20% chance to trigger um, multiple bursts on melee hit. So if we really want to get to the maximum effect of um, like proccing these balls, like I think I think it's like a 0 0.15 uh, second cooldown, you can proc about 6 times per second. You need to get to about 30 attacks per second. That's pretty unrealistic for almost um, any build, unless like, like maybe you have like Soul Eater or something, like you, you need to have some sort of ramp to get to that level of attack speed, like head onto stacks. This build can crack about 20 attacks, I think, per second when the buffs are. I think that's uh, I think that's as, as good as you're going to get, like specking more into attack speed is going to like at the cost of your damage or your life. It's I don't think it's worth it just to get the, the 30 attack trigger points. I think uh, just getting your attack speed as high as you can in order to maximize how often your uh, Molten Burst is coming out. Um, I think that's probably what you're aiming for, and Onslaught helps with that a lot because it gives you attack speed when you scale it, and also gives you movement speed when you scale it. And also, Duress's Defiance gives Endurance Charges on kills, so it gives you, makes, gives you a little bit of more um, survivability. Um, I wouldn't say it's a mandatory unique you could use. You could probably have a lot of choices. You could use, uh, for example, with Dialas um, for alt quality to your gems. I'll get into the gems in a second. Or you could go for a rare chest with good life, good resistances. So moving on to rings. Uh, these rings are pretty much uh, very specific to the build. You notice that they're pretty, they look you know, pretty mediocre. Uh, it's because um, I need to get exactly 99 intelligence on my build. That's kind of how I've shot myself in the foot here. I would not recommend doing what I've done. I have to cap my int exactly at 99 because if I go to 100, I lose my crucible node. So this ring gives me exactly 33 intelligence, which I figured out is how much I need on the, like, how much I need to not go over, but also to, you know, bring me to the cap of the ins I can run. And yeah, you, you go for resistances, you get um, channeling skills of minus total mana cost. This is kind of important for Cyclone to bring Cyclone cost down to one. So I have two of these. The other one just has a bit of strength, a bit of resistances. The amulet right now I'm using is Ashes. The reason why Ashes is really good for Cyclone is because I'm running a Divergent Cyclone. Divergent Cyclone's quality is you get more movement speed, the more quality you get. So normally the last multiplier for Cyclone is like 30%, but then the alt quality, the Divergent quality is giving you 13% more movement speed. So it's making you a lot faster because the penalty for Cyclone is a lot less. So getting uh, Venue Cas uh, getting Venue Cascade is the anoint for the Molten Burst. I didn't use the Ashes of the Stars for most of the time when I was doing low tier mapping. I used the Yoke of Suffering uh, with Vengeance Cascade. You can use any amulet you want. I just bought a Yoke because I had Vengeance Cascade on the turn already and it was cheap at the time. Uh, but I think Vengeance, uh, but I think um, Ashes of the Stars is what you ideally want because it also helps with your gem level and also your reservation. The reason why gem level is important is because at level 21, Cyclone gains another stage. So if I take this out, you'll see it's six stages at level 20. When you pop it in with the plus one, it becomes seven stages. Seven stage gives you an extra uh, like 
like a ring on your cyclone, so extra radius. So I think that's pretty important. It means you don't have to get a 2120, uh, a 2123 divergent cyclone. You can settle for 2023. The quality is pretty important because you're trying to get to the breakpoint. So since it goes up by one percent every, uh, one percent movement speed every four quality, you're looking for something divisible by four. So with mine, you get to 52, I believe. 52, 52 divided by four is 13. So that's how you get the 13% more movement speed on the gem. In terms of the other gear, uh, we have the cool tech with Calm Spirit where you're converting your life regeneration into rage. That way you get permanent uptime for your rage and also your berserk through maps. Berserk is a huge damage multiplier, speed multiplier, everything that you kind of want for this build. So we're running a Calm Spirit and a Immortal Flesh. Immortal Flesh just gives you a huge amount of regenerated life per second. If I get a roll that's towards the higher end so you can get the maximum value out of your uh, calm spirit and then for the boots just running a typical um, <clears throat> movement speed and avoid elemental elements boots you need these to kind of cap out your elemental elemental uh, ailment avoidance that helps out a lot for maps you don't get frozen you don't get um, chilled you don't get um, ignited and that's kind of the, the gear set at the moment this gear was def will definitely change when I re-gear it for tier 16s to do all content and end game content but at the moment, I think this gear is very, very um, uh, good for just running low tier maps. And outside of like the ashes here, most of this gear is really, really cheap. Like you can probably build this character for less than two divines. The ashes is only the upgrade you get when you're starting to push the character for high tier maps. You can definitely run this without an ashes. It's not really mandatory for the build. All right, in terms of flasks, so we're just running a life flask here with anti-bleed and anti-corrupting blood. We're running a dying sun for two extra projectiles and extra AOE. Uh, for our Molten Burst, running a Quicksilver with um, increased movement speed and increased effect, so obviously we want more speed. I'm running an Oriath's End here for creating explosions for mobs. I didn't use this for a very, very long time. I think probably 80% of the time I used use the regular Bismuth Flask. I switched to an Oriath's End because, like I said, I'm gearing the character towards higher tier maps. The uh, Explodes are really, really nice for kind of clearing out a whole pack of mobs because you hit one and then the the whole pack explodes. Definitely not mandatory for the build. Makes the build feel a lot nicer. If you can grab this, uh, definitely do. It will make the mapping experience feel a lot smoother. And then yeah, I'm running a Bountiful Jade Flask just for extra evasion. Um, so those are the flasks. I'll talk about my gem links now. So inside your uh, Namaku's Flame, you don't actually have to link this at all because all the gems affect Molten Burst. So you can have it like, you can leave it like even unlinked if you want. It doesn't matter at all. So I'm running GMP, Vicious Purge, Combustion, Fire Pen, Conk Effect, and LE Damage with Attacks. In my Helmet, I'm running my Auras, so I'm running Precision, Vitality, Blood Rage, Blood and Sand. In my Chest, I'm running Divergent Cyclone with Divergent Increased AoE, so Divergent Qualities gives increased more, like even more AoE. Um, rage Support, Fire Pen, Pulverize, and LE Damage with Attacks. These aren't the best damage things for the build, this is more for AoE and um, keeping up Berserk time, so this, these, gem, these gem links will probably be different as well in tier 16, but for the purposes of this character, um, it's all about speed, so I've kept it for AoE and Berserk uptime. In the gloves, I'm running an Enlighten with Haste, Herald of Ash, and Anger. Uh, you notice that there is an Enlighten 4 here, this is absolutely not necessary. Um, the mana reservation that you have here, uh, all you have to do if you're feeling a bit tight on mana, is you just drop the level of your precision. So I'm running level 21 precision. Uh, I don't even benefit from the crit. It's mainly the accuracy rating that helps. You can probably run like a level 14, 15 uh, precision if you don't have an Enlightened 4. Same with Vitality. You can run like level 1 Vitality. You're, name, you're mainly getting Vitality for the Watcher's Eye effect I'll talk about in a second. But yeah, if you're feeling a bit tight for mana, just uh, don't level up your precision or your Vitality too high, and then you should be able to squeeze all the auras in. In my boots, running Leap Slam with Berserk and Enduring Cry, and then they're all linked to Life Tap, so I can just cast them with Life. Uh, nothing too crazy here. Uh, Leap Slam is just mainly for getting around uh, like cliffs or objects that Cyclone can't go up. Normally, you don't really use Leap Slam unless uh, you need to get past an object. So for the passive tree, we have it gone as a Raider. Um, we've gone Wave the Poacher, Avatar of Slaughter. Rapid Assault and Avatar of the Chase, and then we're using Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flash for Avatar of the Veil. The reason why we're doing this is because those were really, really cheap. I think they were like one or two divs each for those, um, for those 
yeah, for the Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flesh. I think ideally the best scenario is you grab um, I'd maybe p- potentially even Tailwind from Dead Eye. I think Tailwind would be really good, and then you manually allocate Quartz of Fusion and then Avatar of the Veil. I think this would be the more appropriate setup for end game mapping, and you drop Onslaught entirely. You can get Onslaught somewhere else, like maybe Onslaught on hit for like a ring, or get a Thunder Silver Flask. I don't think uh, these notes are particularly great um, for end game mapping. I just think it's a really, really good early game because it gives you a perma onslaught and increased effective onslaught. So it makes it really, really fast early on. Um, yeah, so we look at the tree here. Uh, this tree is pretty much built for speed. Speed and um, like speed and almost like uh, AoE. So we start with just a uh, default range under tree where we get charisma here. We get multi shot, so our Namahu's Molten Burst gets an additional projectile, and that's also in the attack mastery, so we get a bit of attack speed and we get the plus three to melee strike range. Then we go up here, we grab all the friendly charge, the maximum friendly charge as possible because we are a raider, so we get frenetic, we get some life here. And then for our Watcher's Eye, um, this is a really, really uh, important aspect of the build. Uh, you're aiming for a Watcher's Eye with uh, haste. Uh, phasing while affected by haste and life on hit while affected by vitality. That's why I mentioned the vitality level doesn't really matter, but you should be running a vitality. The reason why you're running a vitality is because you're hitting enemies so often um, with your cyclone because your attack speed is ridiculously high and also you have to molten burst. You're getting a crazy amount of life back on hit. So you're getting almost like insta leech back when you hit enemies. And since you don't have any regen because of calm spirit, uh, you really need this, uh, this mod on the watcher's eye to keep your uh, life sustained while you're mapping. And the other very important note is um, getting uh, phasing while you're affected by haste. Since we're not grabbing um, quartz infusion here, uh, you need to have um, phasing up full time to get Avatar of the Veil's benefits. So that's why we run a Watcher's Eye with phasing while affected by haste. The last mod, ideally, you get a uh, Fizz damage converted to fire while affected by anger. That way, you don't have to grab the fire mastery all the way down here. Um, not necessary because you can just get that note anyway. It gives you 40% fizz converted to fire. I think it's nice because it lets you save some points. Um, you probably won't need to worry about getting that note because you can just get physical convert to fire in other ways. But if you can grab one with a triple mod, yeah, go for it. Yep, so nothing too crazy. So we're grabbing further here for more frenzy charges and some life. And we're grabbing accuracy here. So it just gives accuracy and attack speed. You'll notice that this build is actually a precise technique. So we're not actually doing anything scaling with crits because like I said before, you need a lot of investment in the build if you want to take it um, to ramp up the damage and also take it to higher tier maps. So precise technique is really, really good for a more cheaper uh, budget oriented uh, build because you're not really focusing on getting crit and it's just more, just it's a big mul multiplier for your attack damage if your accuracy rating is higher than life. So you can just quickly see here, my accuracy rating is 4.5. My life's only 3.3, so I'm getting that bonus. And pretty much all the other nodes here, you're grabbing, you're going for speed everywhere on the trees. So you're getting freedom of movement. You're getting fleet foot. You're grabbing the uh, disciple of slaughter down here, um, and you're grabbing point blank. So these nodes here, so point blank and long shot, this is meant to increase your effectiveness for your namahus, your molten burst. Uh, and then Fellow of Foes here, so this increases your effective onslaught with the mastery and you get a bit of accuracy rating and increased damage. Uh, I think this like this tree will look a little bit different um, if you want to scale both, because right now we're not being very e efficient at scaling the cyclone aspect and also the projectile aspect. Potentially in the future, you're probably going to be looking at cluster jewels that scale both damage sources and crit. Um, I think that will probably be the correct way to go to scale into higher tiers. So I'll probably have a different passive tree, different video on that. This video is just more for getting the full speed to full uh, clear and like the low tier blitzer. Getting a cloth and chain here and more life. This is for a bit of defenses. Um, and we're getting champion of the cause and reservation efficiency so we can help uh, reserve the mana. And call to arms so we get enduring cry straight away on our left click. So it gives you instant regen. How it works with the rage stacks here. So if I pop um, Berserk, you'll see the Berserk starts ticking down the rage. And then when you pop Enduring Cry, it tops you up quite a bit because it gives you a huge burst of life. So it's like about 2000 life regen over one second. And that gets converted into uh, rage for your character. And then we're running a cluster jewel here for increased damage with axe hits. So it's Calamitous, Feed the Fury, Martial Prowess. We don't really get care about Calamitous, we're just getting Feed the Fury and Martial Prowess. Gives your accuracy, attack speed, damage. 
This one gives uh, attack speed while leeching and increased damage. So both of these are pretty great nodes for um, getting your character more damage. And for our mediums, we're running increased area damage. So Titanic swings towering threats. So this gives a huge amount of AOE. Uh, if you're using a two-handed weapon, this gives a bit of life. So this all helps to make the Cyclone AOE bigger. And it's the same on this. So this is where we've put our Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flesh. And then, yeah, for just regular jewels, you're just going for increased damage. So like increased area damage, fire damage, uh, damage with axes, two-handed weapons. Uh, just getting generic sources of damage is great for the build because we are spec across very thinly in terms of speed and um, projectile damage. So getting just some raw damage nodes, so getting some raw damage jewels is great for increasing the build's damage. Yeah, just for quickly for Pantheons, you're going for sort of the Brian King, so you can't be stunned if you've been stunned or blocked or stunning hit in the past two seconds. This just stops you from getting chain stunned while you're cycloning. I haven't really noticed, noticed this as an issue. After you get enough speed and damage, you can just kind of like go past mobs. They won't really hit you that often. And then getting uh, Soul of Aberrath, so this is decent if you want to farm um, uh, Red Altars in the future on, on the character, so you're not affected by Ignite, not affected by Burning Ground. Um, otherwise, it's up to you what you want to grab. You could grab the Vislatha if you want more life charges. You, you could grab Soul of Shikari if you're worried about poison. Um, the main node is getting the Brian King, so you can't be stunned um, out of your Cyclone multiple times. And that's just, yeah, that's just kind of really important for Cyclone builds. Quickly go into my POB so you can have a quick understanding of this movement speed and also the damage. So we're hitting about 441% movement speed multiplier when we're in maps. Might be a little bit lower because your rage is ticking down, but getting over 400% movement speed, that's pretty um, pretty consistent. Uh, you'll have about 2 million single target damage, so it's not the best in the world, it's not the worst. Um, how you calculate the damage is you go to Molten Burst here and you type it about the projectile count. So we have 11 projectiles in this build. And if you click include on full, full DPS, it will give you a 11x uh, Molten Burst here. You can combine with your Cyclones. You get an understanding of what your full DPS is. Um, this number should actually be higher because with Vengeance Cascade, the balls bounce twice. So they bounce once and it bounce back to you. So you could potentially put this maybe at like 16 or like 17. Your damage is about 3 million. It's not awful for a mapper, but obviously it's not to, like it's nothing compared to the super end game farmers. Um, like I said, this is not meant to be a tier 16 or uber fighter or any crazy um bossa there are other characters that will do this a lot better than this build but those characters will no will come nowhere near as fast as this build this build is main purpose its main objective is speed speed and clear that is the uh identity for the build and that's why i'll be making a second video because this video just talks about uh, the speed and uh clear for this part one and then part two will cover the end game version of this build I think I've covered uh, most of the more important parts of the character. You've probably seen in the previous videos that I've been doing, this character has just been uh, running, chaining low tier maps and kind of like, you know, blasting through and people got excited to see the speed. So I think um, you guys have a great time if you try, um, try this character out. Just make sure to um, balance out your defenses as well as your speed. Don't just go full speed because you will die in maps if you don't have any source of defenses. Uh, my defense is a little bit scuffed because my reses aren't capped, but my abysmal fast is capping them in maps, plus my endurance charges from my Duress Defiance, plus Enduring Cry. Those will give me permanent endurance charges in maps and help me sustain um, a little bit more defenses. Yeah, so this is a part one of the build. Uh, there will probably be a part two coming later after I've kind of had a look at this character and reviewed it and geared it up for higher tier maps. Uh, it won't be as fast as this one. It won't have as much AoE as this one. Um, it will have more damage and it's probably more viable for taking on the end game, but it kind of defeats the purpose of having the, like the speed demon aspect of this build where you're just trying to go as fast as you can and you're trying to blitz through maps as fast as you can. Because as soon as you start building more defense, more damage, you're going to have to sacrifice something. So that's going to have to be speed, going to have to be AOE. So yeah, guys, really appreciate you guys checking out uh, the video. If you have any questions about the build, uh, I'll be sure to leave a uh, POB down below so you can have a look at how to build a character out. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe. It really helps out to see the visibility for these videos. And if you like the video, drop a like. And if you have any comments, put them down below and I'll try my best to answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video.